Okay, so I said the idea of Wikidata is to be for data what comments is for multimedia. To have one common repository where we store structured data that the, Wiki, that the other Wikimedia projects can use and also outside of that. Um, this is an early mock-up of how the system could look like. So basically, we speak about different entities, like in this case Berlin, which, is, which are there derived from the Wikipedia site, pages, articles, and then we have structured data about them, like the population, who's the mayor, and so on. And all of these things are not just strings, they're actually entities with labels in a specific language, which allows us to simply switch the whole interface between the different languages. So we will have one database, but for all the 500 languages or so that MediaWiki supports, and where the people can access the data, uh, assuming we have translations for the labels. So the goals of Wikidata are to provide a database of the world's knowledge that anyone can edit, collect references and quotes from millions of data items. This is an important point. We are not trying to represent the truth, what is the truth about Berlin and so on, but rather we're collecting references, reference statements in the world and giving access to all of them. They might be inconsistent with each other. To engage a sustainable community that collects data. So uh, our goal is not to become the biggest data heap out there, but rather to have a community that actually maintains the data and works with it. Increase the quality and lower the maintenance cost of Wikipedia at the same time. Because the data is in one place before all the languages, they can access to it. And so whenever the population of a country gets updated, this propagates to all the different Wikipedia languages. We don't have to go manually and do it anymore and to deliver the software for building the, thing, uh, to building the whole system and deliver community best practices of how we're going to do that. The project is split in three phases. Can I tell you to click on it whenever? Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, it's a community effort. Um, the project is split into three phases. First, language links, infobox orientation, and inline queries, please. So the first phase, as you know, the language links are currently in every single Wikipedia written again and again. Click. So you might on the English Wikipedia have this list of language links, click. On the German Wikipedia, this list of language links is always the same again and again for all the names. This means we have a lot of language links everywhere, and whenever they change, they change public for it. What we're going to do, click, is to have one nice interface that will have all the language links in one place in Wikidata, and, it, and the different Wikipedias just pull the data from Wikidata and display it on their own. It looks, you're shaking your head. You yeah, don't like that? You're scared about that. Um, we're, not, we're not making it necessary, I mean, sorry, we're not making it mandatory to use it. The old system is still in place. This is for the 99.2% of links that are simple one-to-one -one cases. For the rest of the 0.8% of links, which are not simple one-to-one -one case, the old system works just as now. 99.2% to 0.8. So we're helping 99.2% of the pages. I think it's fine. Okay. <laughs> not scared anymore. <laughs> Good. I always like to convince people with data. Um, Good. So basically, we have one place where we edit the things and then it gets access in the Wikipedias. Next. So that's phase one. Currently, we have a demo of that. You can check it out. Um, the links will be on IRC afterwards. Um, in phase two, then, click, we go on the other side of the page, the info boxes. So the info boxes also have a lot of data and we want to have them in one central space. Right now, as you know, click, we have those template uh, links, um, uh, these template instantiations with a lot of weird syntax. A lot of people get actually scared when they click on edit and see this thing and they don't edit the page anymore. We would replace it with one call to the infobox country and the infobox country fills its data from Wikidata. Click, we would have, one more, um, we would have the system that we've seen before that we can enter the data which is then accessible to the Wikipedias. Every single item can be sourced. We can have further structure to the, uh, to the single data and even um, statements that, that are not um, consistent with each other. Just click through for the next few. 
Go on. Okay. In the last and third phase of the project, uh, we want to enable list creation in Wikipedia. So right now, as you know, there are a lot of lists in Wikipedia that are completely maintained manually usually. Click one example, it's a list of countries by GDP. Click list of countries by GDP per capita. Click list of countries by GDP per capita. Click list of countries by GDP per capita per capita. So you have all these kind of lists. You have many of them. Some of my favorite lists, click list of water and cross dressers. I love this. Click list of animals of 400 dollars. And my favorite, click list of inventors, click by the only mentions. Those lists are not only maintained once. You have them in different languages, like click Spanish, click Portuguese, click, um, I think this is Hungarian, Hungarian click um, Polish, click, click uh, French, click um, this Finnish, okay, so me, yeah, right, click, and Japanese. So you have, this is translated again and again to this. Except we could have one place to actually contain the data. Um, okay, click. So, and the nice thing is, you don't have only to create for those lists. We can actually, once we have the data in a machine readable way, we can also create a number of different visualizations with it. Click. So, uh, this is an idea that we took from Semantic Media Wiki, which is a software that does similar things to what Wikidata will do. Click. Um, so, in Semantic Media Wiki, we have a lot of visualizers for this kind of machine readable data. It could be on a map, as a chart, as a picture gallery, or even something that is part of the Google Earth, and then you use there. Click. So, again, this is the team. They're around here. Maybe everyone who is in the team, just quickly wave your hand. So, these are those that are here. There are more of them outside. Yep. <laughs> um, just talk with them. Ask us if you have any further questions. Click. So thank you for your attention. I promise you a short talk. Uh, if you have any questions, just come to us and talk to us. Click. Thank you. <laughs>
people sadly still just change stuff without showing any trades. Okay. That's actually really tough. Yeah. One last question before we just break this up, and then you can, you can still ask us stuff, but just for the big one. Uh, this is sort of back to the, the first the first question. Uh, so if you're gonna if you're gonna incorporate the data in line in an article somehow, um, how do you how do you determine like you were saying earlier uh, what the scope of that data will be? Do, uh, can you give us an example of how that will be visualized or or, um, or can you possibly you know, choose which sources you want to use? Yes, so first, you can choose which sources to use. And second, basically, if you're on the page for Berlin, for example, um, so the, the current suggestion that Daniel wrote, uh, wrote this week would be to use a parser function called property, asking for population. And in this case, the population gets displayed in the place of the parser function. So basically, you have a call to Wikidata, display the data there. And that's something that usually will be happening in templates. So instead of using template parameters, we would have those parser functions to Wikidata. So this is the rough overview. There are a few tweaks that would need to be discussed, but I guess we'll take that offline. Okay, so thank you for the attention. I think you have more questions. Ask us. We're here. Thank you.